Is Sam Kane the best seven we have in New Zealand? He is the All Blacks captain. He is the default guy for open side flanker with the All Blacks under Ian Foster. But based on performances in Super Rugby Aotearoa, is he the guy for the job? That's the question we'll be looking at at this video. So I will be looking at the stats from Super Rugby Aotearoa. A quick word before I get started. Uh, how's it being done? I've picked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys who were maybe potential candidates for that All Blacks seven role. Uh, Savia, Kane, Karifi, Papali'i, Hunt, Christie, and Boshia. Keep in mind, not all of these guys played seven during Super Rugby Aotearoa. Some of them did, some of them floated, and like Adi Savia pretty much played exclusively eight. They seem determined to convert him into an eight from a seven. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a look at the stats from that limited sample size, which was Super Rugby Aotearoa, pretty short competition. About the same length as a Rugby World Cup, really, in terms of number of games played per player. Uh, and the numbers are adjusted to meet the whole Super Rugby Aotearoa season. So some guys played more games than others. Some guys played less minutes. I've adjusted everyone's numbers so they're on a level playing field. Same with Dylan Hunt, who played the most minutes of everybody. So everyone's numbers have been boosted. All right, so when I read these numbers, these are adjusted totals for the entire Super Rugby season. So with the guys who played less minutes than Dylan Hunt, which is everybody, their numbers have been boosted by whatever the difference was in minutes to make sure their performance levels were kind of reflect equally. But yeah, we'll go over some of the stats, and then at the end, we can kind of make some conclusions. Uh, is Sam Kane the man for the job? And you guys can let me know yes or no. Uh, tries, the answer would be no. Sam Kane was not a big try scoring threat in Super Rugby Aotearoa. Didn't get any. Neither did Adi Savia. Uh, neither did Dylan Hunt. Uh, your main guys there are Lachlan Boshia, who can probably feel pretty, pretty snubbed by the All Blacks not calling him up. Uh, and also Dalton Papali. So those guys with the adjusted numbers would get you five tries in the Super Rugby Aotearoa season. Uh, Christie's three. Uh, and Karifi is one. The other guys are all none. However, two of you guys who didn't get tries in Savia and Kane both had try assists. So over the course of the campaign, Kane would get you two. Savia would get you one. The rest of the guys, not a single one. So are you picking your number seven based on the number of tries and try assists he's going to score? Probably not, but it's just an interesting little factoid. Uh, passes. Who's getting involved with the play? Who's making themselves uh, an important cog in that team's machine? In this one, uh, Sam Kane is actually your number one man. Uh, averaging 54 passes across the Super Rugby season. Very much involved in the build-up play for, for the Chiefs. Savia is, uh, is number two with 52. Remember, he's playing number eight for that season. Uh, the rest of the guys are kind of in the 30s and the 20s. So quite a gap between Sam Kane, uh, Savia, and the rest. And Dalton Papali is way down there at the bottom with an adjusted seven passes for the whole season. So if that guy gets the ball... Uh, in all likelihood, he's not going to pass it to you. Uh, runs and run meters. Now, this can kind of work towards both your your work rate, but also how dynamic you are as a ball carrier. So, for example, uh, Adi Savia kind of unsurprisingly tops the number of runs with 69 adjusted numbers and uh, run meters with 247. Whereas Sam Kane is second for runs with 65. So very good work rate. Remember, he was up there with passes. He's up there with runs. He's a key piece in that Chiefs machine. But he's last on adjusted run meters with 82. So he's running the ball a lot, but he's hardly making over a meter per carry. Uh, the rest of the guys, like uh, Karifi and Christie, are kind of there. One, 178, 177 for run meters from 55 and 49. Uh, and then kind of you know we make our way down to the bottom so is sam kane a workhorse player judging by those numbers you would say yes he gets involved into a bit of everything is he a dynamic ball carrier no and that's reflected by the next step which is clean breaks who's your number one guy for clean breaks Adi Savia. again no surprise he's number eight he's quick he's a dynamic player we know that about him uh, the other guys, most of them are on five, Karifi, Papali'i, Christi, and Boshia, all with five, Hunt with three, Sam Kane without a single one to his name, so he's bringing up the rear again, uh, and then defenders beaten, again, it's Adi Savia, 18 defenders beaten, uh, Sam Kane's not at the bottom, but he is kind of like second to last with an adjusted six, Savia 18, uh, Hunt 12, Karifi 11, Boshia eight, so what does this tell you? Adi Savi is a pretty bloody dynamic ball carrier. Yes. Sam Kane's a workhorse. Yes. Is he a dynamic ball carrier? Not so much. Everybody else is kind of in the middle with nobody else being all that outstanding. Um, 
Offloads, though, Sam Kane is actually the top guy. Should have probably included that with passes, but he six across the whole season. Uh, Savia, five, likewise Hunt. Uh, Christy and Boshia with, uh, with none. So maybe that leads a bit to, to Sam Kane having better hands. What about turnovers conceded when you've actually coughed up the pill? Obviously, if you got your number seven, you probably want him to be winning you more pill than coughing up. Uh, Sam Kane is not kind of in the top category for that. Uh, Savia, Hunt, and Boshia only had one throughout the whole season, so pretty safe pairs of hands. Uh, Papali E3, Christy and Kane 5, and Karifi was actually the biggest uh, you know, loose carrier with, with 7, either knocking on or being turned over. Tackles, missed tackles, tackling percentage. Now, this is one area we look at and probably think, this is where Sam Kane better score pretty bloody high. If he's not going to be a dynamic ball carrier, which is, again, maybe what you want your number 8 and number 6 to be more so than your number 7, uh, you would expect Sam Kane to score highly here, and he really does. Averaging across the season for 111 tackles, that puts him in the number 1 spot. Uh, then it's Karifi, Papali'i, Hunt down to 100, uh, Christy 94, Boshia 79. I remember, Boshia is one of the guys who we look at and think, man, he was pretty hard done by. He was number one guy for tries, but he wasn't number one for run meters. He was kind of lower order for that. Uh, clean breaks, he was in the middle. Defenders beaten, he was in the middle. Uh, turnovers conceded, he was pretty good. Uh, but tackles, he is second to last with Adi Savia being uh, the least in terms of number of tackles. However, I guess, and it's hard to, to judge based on, on the totals, but missed tackles, Boshia only had five. Uh, and Savia also 5. So their tackling percentage is pretty high. Boshi has 93% tackle success. Uh, likewise, Christie 93. Sam Kane's 89, which I think overall is pretty bloody respectable. He's 14 missed from 111 uh, made. But if you combine that and you're looking at your work rate, remember here, Sam Kane was your work rate guy for a number of passes, number of runs, so getting involved. So total attempted tackles, Sam Kane is also your number one guy, 125. Uh, Karifi second, 124, but Karifi had the lowest tackle success rate with 84%. So, again, Sam Kane is not is not that dynamic, but he's got a hell of a ticker. Uh, let's look at turnovers, because that's another area that you think Lachlan Boshia did pretty well. Now, these stats, I'm not sure if these are just clean pilfers or if they're also penalties forced. These are the stats from Rugby Pass. It's just called turnovers one. Number seven, probably a bread and butter stat, and Sam Kane's your number one guy. Adjusted number makes him with 11 over the season. Uh, Hunt is with 10. Boshi is your third guy, eight. Uh, Papa the E5, and then uh, Christy with two. Karifi and Savia, the two Hurricanes guys, just with one across the entire season. So a bunch of tackles, pretty high tackling percentage, very high work rate, good at the breakdown. Is this where Ian Foster's gone? I can kind of see the logic. It's a workhorse, number seven, reliable player, huge ticker. I don't know, you guys can agree or disagree, but that's where I'm, that's what the numbers at least seem to indicate. Uh, line out wins, which is kind of a bonus stat for, for a number seven. You're not really picking a, an open side flanker for their ability to, to take and steal line out ball. But I mean, you look at the likes of Peter Mahoney with Ireland. Like, it's certainly a very useful skill to have. It's another threat to be able to steal ball and uh, makes the, the hooker's job a bit easier if he's got another line option. Uh, Boshia is your star man there, there with 32 being the adjusted number for him for the whole season, which is massive. The next best would be Adi Savia with 13. Uh, Sam Kane would have two across the whole season compared to Boshia's 32. So are you picking Sam Kane to jump at the line-out? No. Um, penalties conceded, I guess, is another one you've got to be mindful of. Because if you're trying to pill for the ball, it's an area where you're likely to get pinged. Uh, Sam Kane scores pretty well on that one. Um, Karifi is the most conceded guy. Remember, he missed the most tackles and uh, concedes the most penalties. So I was a bit a bit bummed for Duplessis that he didn't make the North-South squads. But maybe, again, some of these numbers are a little bit telling. Uh, Kane is sixth. So he's only bested by Dylan Hunt who only conceded three across the entire season. Um, red cards, nobody got any. Yellow cards, Sam Kane does come in with the highest rate of yellow cards per game. I mean, he got a yellow card. Uh, likewise did Savia and Papali'i, but 
uh, just marginally in terms of um, games played. So given how, how short the season was, probably won't read too much into that one. But that's it. That's the summary of the stats, man. Um, for mine, I honestly think Sam Kane, unpopular opinion, had a pretty good Super Rugby on Turtle season. His team was a bit crap, but he did the job that was asked of him, which was to make a ton of tackles, make himself a nuisance at the breakdown. I think that's why he's there. I think that's why he's there. Uh, a bunch of other guys like Boshia. Boshia is a is a bit of a, again, I think he's really unlucky. He's your tries guy. Uh, he is um, your line out guy. So he does a lot of stuff which is, I guess, obvious. But maybe he's not got quite the work rate which some of the other guys have. His number of involvements in terms of like ra uh, runs and passes is just not as high as some of the other guys, even if he's the one scoring the try. So, yeah, you guys have seen the numbers. You guys let me know what you reckon. Do you think Kane, based on these numbers, is any better than you thought? Maybe he's doing a bit more workhorse stuff and less of the glamour stuff? Or are you still of the opinion Foster got it wrong? We should have gone with Whitelock. We should have gone with Tuipulotu. Or maybe someone else. Boshia should still be in the squad. Uh, even based on this, you could argue, is Adi Savia pretty much a full-time eight now? Or can you see him going back to seven? Remember, his turnover numbers weren't that pretty but he wasn't playing seven so maybe that wasn't what he was being asked to do but anyway you guys let me know your thoughts if you want to buy me a beer for all the copying and pasting i did uh to accumulate that bloody data uh, i'll put a link in the description for that one but um yeah cheers guys and i'll talk to you again soon see you later